We're thrilled to have welcomed our first grandbaby recently. But growing this precious human hasn't been easy on our daughter. The unrelenting pregnancy fatigue really took it out of her. One thing that helped was keeping her fluids up. And she loved Rehydrate. Rehydrate is an essential electrolyte drink made by some great guys right here in Brizzy. It's safe during pregnancy and breastfeeding and is like a magical little energy and hydration boost for mum and bub. If you're growing a little human or are just feeling a little run down, grab some at Coles today. This is the Happy Families Podcast with Dr. Justin Coulson. We are Luke and Susie, and this is the podcast for time-poor parents who just want answers now. If you have not heard of Fortnite, you are a very fortunate person. Uh, we're not talking seems... about the every second week, no. kind of, that two-week period. No, no, it's an online game, and it seems in the world of my children and many other children, yeah. everyone is playing it. And uh, there's been a little bit of awkward, uh, sort of challenging moments in our parenting and for our nine-year-old, mm. all surrounding this game of Fortnite and how brutal Daddy has been to say, I'm sorry, you can't play this. Dr. Justin Coulson from happyfamilies.com.au joining us in the studio. Fortnite is everywhere, Justin. I get so many emails, so many requests, so many pleas. What do I do about Fortnite? Mm. Uh, parents are stressing out about it. It's the it's it's kind of like, you know, when we were kids, yo-yos were everything. <laughs> marbles yeah. occasionally got banned ma- ma- at school. Well, marbles were banned, yeah, yeah uh, because we were so compelled. We were so we were addicted to it. I, I remember yeah. I was, don't you bring that yo-yo into the house? Because uh, you break things, right? You yes. hit your sister in the head with it yeah. as you try and do around the world. Yeah. Um, now it's Fortnite. It's a mm. different world, obviously. Yeah. And, and Fortnite is the game that has captured the hearts and minds of um, our young boys and young men and even some girls and some, some grown-ups as well. Yeah. And can I, can I say that no matter what your opinion of the game is, what intelligent business from the game makers and how they put it all together to make money. Mm. Like, and, and incredibly so, with all the dance moves and all the fun that they've put into it and, and, and all the, the gore they've pulled out of it, but it's still left as a first-person shooter game targeted at children. Well, the, the age advisory is 12 and up, so yeah. let's be clear about that. And, and I have to be really direct, and I hope that I say this with appropriate sensitivity. Mm. Parents, you've got to stop letting your kids do stuff before they're old enough. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's an age advisory of 12 plus because it's a first per- person shooter game. It's violent. And what happens is I, I get all these parents saying to me, but I've got a nine year old or I've got a, yeah. an 11 year old or an eight year old. And in fact, I got one mum email me the other day and she said, my six year old has been invited to a fortnight party. Mm. I mean, th- yeah. These kids are six. Yeah. It's not good for our kids to be playing first person shooter games, even without the gore. Yeah, because they've taken the gore out. Yes, it's, it's, but but it's still violent. You're lining yeah. someone up and you're shooting them. It's not in their best interest for us to be letting them play this. So I probably need to at this point for any adult who hasn't played these sorts of games. First person shooter literally means your character, the person you're controlling, has a gun and is shooting other. Right. People. So when you look at the screen, you can see your gun yeah. and you aim your gun at. Uh, the other characters, yes. and, and because and, it's online, online that's often people you know from school or from well, your sports be, you, you, team. You, you, or yeah, you can you have know. you can have yeah. your mates playing in the yeah. same mm. the same game as you. you. You know, you're having the same battle. Yeah. Uh, what, what, the way, look, the way Fortnite works for those who are uninitiated is you, it's it's kind of like the Hunger Games uh, and Minecraft combined. Yeah. So you've got a hundred people yeah. in the game, and while you're trying to build fortifications and trying to you know participate in whatever actions you deem necessary for your fortnighting, uh, what, what you also want to do is you want to destroy everyone who's trying to yeah. kill yeah. you. So you kind of get, like, it, I can see why it would be a popular game. I guess I don't see why I've, uh, my children are watching YouTube videos where I can see a five-year-old playing the game. Right, and, and so yeah. and they're not just watching it on YouTube. Twitch yeah. is the um, Twitch is the site where you go to watch people doing all of this stuff now. And uh, I, I read I read a number just the other day on Twitch. They reckon in the last two weeks, more than five thousand human years have been spent watching gameplay on Fortnite. <laughs> wow! In two weeks, there's been five thousand years of uh, Fortnite watching. I mean, that's it's that's staggering. watching, not playing. Uh, that's watching. Okay. Mm. We've got a nine year old who every single friend in his world is playing Fortnite. And how do you explain to a nine year old why we see the world so totally different from everybody else he knows, and that we say he can't play? A lot of pressure on us to conform to what everybody else is doing. How do we respond to? whether they should play this or not or how do we how do we 
explain it to them. So, Luke, before before I answer that question, let, yeah. let me be really clear. This isn't just about Fortnite. Yeah. This is about your 10-year-old that wants to be on Instagram yeah. or your 12-year-old that wants to be on Snapchat or your 14-year-old who wants to be on Kick. Uh, and, and, you know, there's all of these platforms with all of these age advisories and as parents, we need to be across that. And when, when they say to us, but I'm the only one in the school who's not doing it, yeah. mm. we feel torn. Yeah. Mm. There's a terrible tension. There's this friction. Our children feel like we're we're causing them to be social outcasts and it's a really, really challenging thing. A couple of things that we need to be aware of. First of all, your child is probably not the only one. Yeah. So so work with yeah. other parents. You know, Talk to other parents. Be part of a community. It yeah. takes a village to raise a child. Yeah. So be involved with them and, and make sure that there are, there are, are, there are other kids. Um, that's probably not going to make them feel any better because they still want it. The next thing I'd say is make sure they've got other stuff in their lives. You know, if if they've got their sport yeah. or they've got their music or they've got their art, we want to be giving them a full life. And, and, and I'm not suggesting, by the way, that they should have zero screens or zero screen time. No. They should still be able to do some stuff on their screens. And perhaps they'll have some other friends who will pull themselves away from Fortnite because they are only nine yeah. um, and, and play with them doing some other stuff. Or, you know, here's a, here's a wild idea. As parents, perhaps we can involve ourselves in their lives a oh, little more. Oh, come on. Now, I know we're busy. I know there's emails to write. <laughs> I know there's dinners to cook and baths to run and all that sort of stuff. But but can we just be a bit more involved? I, I know that in, in my home and certainly in the, the, the lives of many other families with whom I've worked, just that one thing, you know, let's pull out the UNO cards. Let's go a bit yeah. old school. Let's play yeah. some Phase 10 or some Skip Bow or uh, Monopoly or, you know, those Monopoly deal cards. I mean, that's, yeah. that's, these are fun games. And if we can distract the kids, give them a full and balanced life and actually have a relationship with them ourselves, things like Fortnite, yes, it will still hurt, but it won't be as bad. Mm. Wow. Last quick point. It's worth having the conversation where you actually explain why. Yeah. Uh, it might not really go very far. They might be upset. They might roll their eyes. They might want to argue, but we still need to provide a bit of a rationale and yeah. say, look, I'm the parent. This is in your best interest, and here's a couple of reasons why. Yeah. Mm. And when I, when I spoke to the 90-year-old, this is where I, I feel like I kind of got it okay, where I went, here's my reasonings. Here's what I think, and I know that not everybody else sees it this way. And I said, Tyson, I might get down the track and think I overreacted. But right now, I've got to make a decision. This is one of those things that we've talked about is an adult decision. And I've got to make a decision. And with what I know now, this is what I have to decide. And Sound I, like you've been reading one of my books. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, we've been following some of those steps. And, yeah. I, and I said, and I know that it looks like your life is missing out because mummy and daddy have these thoughts. But let's, let's talk about all the things that are good in your life because mummy and daddy are different and think and see things differently from some other people. And we talked about all those advantages that we have because of those differences. So it's not he's not just seeing what he's missing out on because of these processes for mummy and daddy. And I'm, I'm talking about our, our faith and our values, but let's look at all the things that are included in our life because of that. And uh, and, and he's, he's done pretty well. He's been he has pretty been respectful. Great. And he's, he's, he's been strong and resilient in the midst of this. Mm. It still doesn't make it any easier for us when we know <laughs> he's standing on the sidelines when his mates mm. are doing this. So exploring more with Dr. Justin Coulson, this whole Fortnite game. Why? as a first-person per- shooter game, why do we need to be concerned about that? Because I know where I drew the line, but I have no psychology training behind me to know whether it's an appropriate line. <laughs> okay, so let's let's go through just a couple of things very yeah. briefly. We could talk for hours, but yeah. I'm, I'm going to keep it really quick with just yeah. two or three main points. Number one, it is violent. I don't care if there's no blood spattering everywhere yeah. like some of the more violent games that are out there. It's still violent. The first time that I got involved in it and watching it, watched it and I, and I downloaded it and had a little yeah. fiddle with it as well, I just thought to myself, I feel really uncomfortable shooting yeah somebody now i know not everybody feels like that but let, let's be real this is hunger games this is i have yeah. to kill somebody to survive it's not real it's a game but nevertheless it's got that violent element um, from a research point of view there's still a fair bit of argument out there as to whether violent games cause violent behavior i think that what we can safely say is that based on the research evidence when we have our when, when we're playing violent games there is some sort of a relationship between that and our ability to take the perspective of others to be empathic mm. to be kind gen- yeah. generous compassionate yeah. uh, and, and experimental studies have shown that does it mean that everyone's going to turn violent no of course not that that's baloney and i'm not trying to yeah. say that but violent video games certainly cause a desensitization to the well-being of others yeah. um, and some people are affected by it 
more than others. Yeah. So from the violence point of view, that, that's a concern. My other major concern with Fortnite, other than the compulsion to play... Yeah. which I'll talk about in a sec, you know, that whole, is it addictive or not? The other main concern that I have, especially when you've got young kids um, who, who are playing, is that there are, there are two chat options. There's a text chat, which is kind of hard. You know, you're playing a game, you're trying to text yeah. at the same time. That's not going to happen. Uh, although some people do use it. If they're using a computer, then that, that's right. Easier, yeah. uh, but then there's also a, um, a voice chat option. So you're, I mean, at the moment, there's somewhere around 40 or 50 million people globally that are playing this yeah. game. Uh, and you can, have as, you can have as many as three and a half million people. That's their record so far, about three and a half million people playing at any one yeah. time. Uh, which means that if your kids are in a game with a hundred other people and it's a fight to the death, there's a chance that globally they're going to have a conversation with someone at some point over this um, this chat, th- this voice chat uh, facility, yeah. where they're going to be potentially exposed to some explicit yep. themes. Yeah. Uh, and and you may or may not be comfortable with that. For me, that's a concern. I don't want my twelve year old hearing some forty six year old playing on the other side of the world saying yeah. or, or down the road saying. F this and, you yeah. know, carrying on. Mm. Yeah, or worse. Or worse. The, the, and, and I think for us, at, outside of Fortnite, for every game like this, we made a bit of a call that, that our children cannot play a game where there's chat uh, options uh, if anybody can access their game, if they can restrict it to just the people that we know, and we know no that those trusts, who are added are their fine. friends from totally. school, yep. then if if there's any if we can control that, then you then you might be able to play it. If we can't control it, it's absolute blanket no. The thing for the violence for me, and I don't know whether this was a, a valid line because I looked at it and went technically there's a there's shooting in lots of games that I let my kids play but I went if it's a cartoon character with a laser gun with circle lasers in something which is so out of the realm of normal then I go mm, I'm, I'm not sure about you know I'm, I'm, I've been okay with that but in this game the line I drew was it's real it's human characters with real guns shooting other human characters <laughs> with real guns and it was not it was not. It was a step away from fantasy. It was closer to reality, and that's where I, I drew the line. A first-person shooter game with human characters with real-life guns. Sure. Is that is is there any validity? Like, can you, can you tell me from a research point of view? I'm not aware of anything that's going to uh, say that this is this is where we draw the line. Yeah. I, look, I have personal feelings that are similar to yours, not yeah. exactly the same, but but fairly similar. And I know many others who feel like uh, we're right, and many who would say, "Come on, that's just garbage." Yeah. At the end of the day, you got to go with your personal values. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that I can refer back to is the research on violent video games show that there is a desensitization, there yeah. is a loss of empathy, and there are some kids who are affected. Quite quite badly by it, although they are in the distinct yeah. and very small minority. Yeah. So then um, the there's also another aspect of Fortnite which we need to be aware of as parents, and games like it, is the money spending. Oh, yeah. You, even though the game itself is free. So kids are spending, literally globally, uh, they reckon it's going to make a couple of billion dollars this year yeah. as kids wow. are, you know, they're buying their power packs and they're... Mm-hmm. they're, they're by dance moves. They have to pay yeah. to get extra dance moves. And, and the other thing that's happening here is, you know, the kids that aren't allowed to play it so often aren't as good and therefore they're spending more money so that they can keep up with the kids who are playing oh, a lot who yeah. are who are just earning their way yep. through the game there you know th- th- there's this desire to stay with my mates and be able to be there so here's the secondary challenge that we've got as parents that we've said you can't play this but if he goes to a mate's place yep. and they play it uh, are there different rules for playing? But even worse than that, because because I, I can I can say I can draw a line and say no, you still can't play no matter where you are. But then he's in a room where all his mates are playing, and we've got a question: Is he allowed to watch somebody else play? <laughs> Look, th- this again is such a tricky one. You know, we uh, we we dealt with this personally, and I've had many other people say, you know, my my sixteen year old son's playing COD. Okay, yep. so Call of Duty, it's a violent game. Yeah. Or, or Grand Theft Auto, Th- these, are, these are violent games. Yeah. These are first-person uh, violent video games. And, um, you know, I've got, I've got a 15-year-old and a 12-year-old, and the 12-year-old wants to play. Mm. No. Well, the 12-year-old still wants to watch. So how do we police that? Or they go over to their mate's place and everyone else is playing, so they're going to be exposed to it anyway. M- my sense is that um, I- I've used this analogy with you previously in a different discussion. We we put a, a fence around our pool to keep our kids from falling in and to keep them safe, but you can't fence the ocean. Mm. The ocean is just too big, and so we've got a, a simple situation where we have to teach our kids to swim. Yeah, uh, 
that's challenging. It means that we've got to have ongoing conversations. And we might say to our kids, we'd prefer that you don't play it. Or we might say, we understand that you're going to want to play it. Our rules in our home are this. Uh, when you go to your friend's house, if they're playing it, we would prefer that you play something else, that you ask if you can do other stuff. If that's not going to happen, if you're going to become a, a complete social um, pariah uh, and you're at your friends and that's what they're doing, you're at the party on Friday night and that's what you're doing, we're not going to be angry at you for joining in. We prefer that you didn't, but we understand the social pull. Uh, but when you're at home and when you're on the devices that we own, the answer will always be no until you're 12 or until we've discussed this further. Yeah. And so, and so th there's only so much that you can do. And with something like Fortnite, uh, I don't think that it's worth destroying your kids' lives over. Yeah. With something like alcohol or cocaine yeah. or pornography. I, yeah. I, I actually think that you know you draw a much firmer line. Yeah, okay. But again, every family is going to be different. There are going to be some families who will say, we're black and white on this. There is simply, you know, it's no. And yeah. you don't play at your friends' houses until they've gotten over their fortnight craze, which will happen in nine months from now or something yeah. like that. Mm. Uh, I don't think that's a helpful way to go. I think it just makes the forbidden fruit that much more attractive. <laughs> yeah. And there are some there are some lines that are worth you know yeah. fighting for, and others that aren't. For me, this one isn't that well, big. I had a conversation with Tice recently on the back of it, where I was just saying to him how much we appreciated that he has upheld our rules on this, um, <clears throat> particularly when he's been at his friend's house, and and his friend is aware of 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 Tyson's he's not going to play the game and his friend's mum is aware that he's not going to play the game and he's not played the game there even though his friend has played it there and I just was saying to him I think that's really awesome and I, I was saying to him he wants to be an a in his mind at the moment his goal is to be an AFL star he wants to play professionally this game of AFL and I said to him all of those men who you see playing AFL have had to stand up and do things that their friends have had to say no to things that all their friends were saying yes to in order to get that good at the game. And it's a life skill to learn to say no when everyone around you is saying yes. And I'm so proud of you that at this age, you've already, you're already starting to learn to say no when everyone else is saying yes. And, and he sort of sat a little taller and he sat a little straighter. And I think he looked a little sharper at that vision of being an AFL player. <laughs> We're feeding that, that dream that, at the moment. That ties in with something that's so mm. important here, and that is that our kids have got to have purpose. And if they understand yeah. the reason, if they understand the rationale, and if they've got a bigger purpose to work towards, then then they will make better choices, whether yeah. it's about Fortnite, whether it's about uh, alcohol and other drugs, whether it's about sex and intimacy, no, no matter what it is, it, they'll make better choices when they've got that bigger purpose to work, yeah. work towards. And frankly, I think that's a, a, a massive failing on the part of our society at the moment, that our young people are all too often so lacking in purpose. Yes, yes. That's a big conversation for yeah. another day. Well, that's been ex extremely helpful and uh, it's uh, both uh, challenged me in my perspective and my e engagement with my children on this, but also, you know, you know helped to kind of feel a bit encouraged that, that I'm not just a weirdo. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Justin Coulson, thank you so much. Hey, let me just add one more quick thing, yeah. super quick. If you're really, really stuck with this and you don't know what to do about it, I'm just going to give you three questions okay, to, cool. to talk oh, yeah. to the kids about, okay? If they're saying, can I, can I, can I play Fortnite? And let's say they are old enough and you're cool with them playing Fortnite. Three quick questions. Number one, has he or she done the stuff that matters most? And I'm talking about, um, you know, I'm talking about chores. I'm talking about um, homework. You know, all the stuff that is supposed to be done. Have you spent time outside? Blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. If all of that's been, if the answer is no, oh, and by the way, has it been done properly? You know, tidy your room. Yeah. Has it been done properly? If the answer is no, then the answer is no. If the answer is yes, then you can move to question two. Question two is simple. Is it going to interrupt anything important like dinner with the family or sleep or relationships or extracurricular activities? If yes, then the answer is no, you can't play right now. If no, then the answer is um, let's look at question three. <laughs> and question three is really simple. Are there clear agreements regarding the amount of time allowed online and or the number of battles that he's allowed to play? Yeah. If the answer is no, then the answer is no. If yes, then go for it. Have fun. Have you done the stuff you need to do? Is it going to interrupt anything? Do we have clear limits? If yeah. all that's in place, go for it. Very all good. Right. I've Doc written that all down. <laughs> Dr. Justin Coulson, thank you so much. Pleasure.
If you enjoy the podcast, please take a moment to rate it on iTunes. When you do that, it increases the visibility of the podcast and helps more people to find it. And if you're not a subscriber, jump onto Apple Podcasts and subscribe so that you can hear every episode as soon as it is uploaded. For more information on all of Dr. Justin Coulson's books, programs and podcasts, go to happyfamilies.com.au or if you'd like to have Dr. Justin Coulson speak at your school or event, go to justincoulson.com.au.